Hello, this is Dr. Todd Grande. Welcome to my video on how to calculate probability using the normal distribution function in Excel. So in counseling appraisal, it's not unusual that we use instruments that have known means and standard deviations. And sometimes we want to calculate the probability that a certain range of scores will appear. And that's what the normal distribution function in Excel will do if the data that you are analyzing are normally distributed. So let's take this first example where I have a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10. This, of course, is a standard score, in this case a T-score. And we want to know what's the probability that we will observe a score that is less than or equal to 40. And you can see it's 15.87%. I'm going to show you how I did that in the cell next to that function. So we'll start with NORM.DIST, normal distribution. And you can see it calls for certain arguments. The first one is the, the observation, or X. The next one is the mean, which is 50, then the standard deviation, which is 10. And you can see it gives you a choice here, uh, true for the cumulative distribution function, or false for the probability mass function. We're going to want to use true. You can see that's how I arrived at that value of 15.87%. So there is a 15.87% chance that any particular score will be less than or equal to 40. Another way you could express this is to say that 15.87% of the scores will be less than or equal to 40. So what if we want to determine the probability the score will fall between two values? So I have a couple examples here of that situation. The first one, a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. And we want to see what's the probability that a score will appear that will be greater or equal to 2 or less than or equal to 3. And we can see it's 2.14%. The way we calculate this is to take the probability that the score will be less than or equal to 3 and subtract it from the probability that the score will be greater than or equal to 2. So again, we'll start with normal distribution. And first, we will include the observation for 3, for the higher the scores. And then, of course, the mean of 0 and standard deviation of 1 and true. And then we'll subtract the same calculation except for the observation 2. You can see that's how I arrived at the 2.14%. And of course this function here is the same. I just, I'm just using the mean and standard deviation uh, from an IQ standard score and values consistent with IQ scores. So 16.13% of the population will have an IQ between 110 or greater than or equal to 110 and less than or equal to 120. Now, I want to take this opportunity to show you how the movements in the scores and the, the ranges in the scores are reflected differently in the probabilities based on where they are in the normal distribution. So the score 110 and 120 are to the right of the mean. They're greater than the mean. So the movement here of 10 points, you see that as a, a percentage, that's a 16 percent. But what if we took 
a distribution right around the mean, but still made it a 10 point difference, which would be 105. So you can see 95 to 105 is still a 10 point difference, just like the 110 to 120, except since it's at the higher point of the bell curve, it is has a value of 26%. So 26% of the population have an IQ greater or equal to 95 or less than or equal to 105. So it really depends on where on the normal distribution the values rest in terms of what kind of percentage you're going to observe here. So therefore we can't assume that every point represents the same difference in probability. So from 99 to 100, it's 2.66% of the population. But from 125 to 126, it's only 0.63. So it's important to understand that relationship between this probability and where the scores fall on the bell curve. So this last example is more or less the opposite of the first. In the first, we were looking for uh, the probability that a value would be less than or equal to a certain score. And in this last example, we, we want to see what the probability is that a score will be greater than or equal to a specified score. In this case, 24, using a mean of 16 and a standard deviation of 4. So the way we would do this is take 1 and then subtract the normal distribution function value for the score. And then, of course, plug in mean and standard deviation, and we're still using true. And you can see that gives us a score of 2.28. So 2.28% of the population would have a score greater than or equal to 24 uh, in this example. Now this makes sense if you consider uh, the opposite of this, which would be less than or equal to 24. We know we would simply take the 1 and the minus sign out of that function. And we can see we have 97.72%. So there's a 97.72% probability of a score less than or equal to 24. Therefore, it makes sense that there's a 2.28% probability of a score of greater than or equal to 24. Using the normal distribution function uh, with the last argument set to true, as I've done in this case, is really the most common usage of the function. But I do want to show you what the other argument is for, the false argument. So let's take this function here and just change the last argument to false. That's the probability mass function. This isn't used much and you see it has a much different score. But this tells us information that's completely different than when we use the argument true. And the way this works is, for this particular example, is it tells us what the probability of the observation of seeing an observation of 40 or a score close to 40 with a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10. Again, if the data is normally distributed. You can see this is not a usage of this function that would be very common but I wanted to show you uh, what the value of false does, how it changes the result. So remember for calculating probabilities, as I've done here, we want to use the argument true at the end. I hope you found this video useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me, and I will be happy to assist you.